It's Michaela with Cry For Minks, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to build a relationship with your clients. Like, comment, subscribe, do what y'all do, y'all know what to do. And most importantly, take the advice I'm about to tell you. Let's get into it. So, the first thing I would do if I had like a new client would be um, stalk them. Not like that, but if they have an Instagram page, if they're booking your website and you get their name, their email, you can look them up on Facebook, things like that, and kind of find, not, not to be on that, but to find out who they are. Find out what they like, who their friends are, what music they listen to, things like that, so you can kind of prepare the appointment for them. It should be all about them. It's not about your vibe last taste. It's not about what music you want to listen to today. It's about if they want to relax, if they want to come turn up, if they want to talk, if they want to cry, whatever they want to do at their appointment. They paid you. They have that hour and a half, two hours, however long it takes you to do their lashes or hair or nails, whatever. That's their time. Okay, baby, you get paid. So don't be making it all about you. Anyways. You want to get to know your clients through their Instagram page. So if they're posting about art, basically you can kind of move your questions to art. So if you're in Atlanta and you don't know really know what to talk about with your client and you know that she likes art, for instance, you can kind of say, you know, I'm thinking about going to a museum this weekend but there's not many in Atlanta that I know of. Have you ever been to one or are you into that type of thing? Things like that. So you can kind of start the conversation and it's more about what so the client likes to talk about so that she's rambling on and on and it could take up the whole service. Um, so that would be the first thing I would do. I would look on Facebook and kind of get to know my clients, see if they have an Instagram. I actually know a couple service providers who ask their clients for their Instagram at and most likely I know the reason why is probably to get to know them and to see who they are before they go ahead and do their service. That is a good, excellent marketing tip and a good thing for a service provider to do to get to know her clients. Now, when meeting a client and you know nothing about her, who she was referred by, things like that, there are intake forms on my website that I have that basically ask the client, you know, who referred you, um, and these are things I also ask in person as well to double back onto the intake forms because sometimes, to be honest, I don't read them all um, when I have a busy day. But I do have a question that asks them what type of vibe they would like for their appointment, whether it's relaxing, R&B, talkative, etc. So that way I kind of know how they want their appointment, their last appointment to be. I also do ask them again before the appointment. Um, because sometimes people's days change. They may have booked two weeks ago and they said they want to relax, but today they just might be in a more up, uptight type of vibe. So I do ask them, you know, is everything okay? Like, is there any music you like to listen to? Or is the frequency music that I play, um, the meditation music in the 432 hertz, is that okay for them? They like to relax. And then sometimes they may want to just listen to their favorite artists. Um, you kind of will feel the vibe of your clients by just knowing if they're answering your questions in a shortcut type of answer, just a one word answer like, no, hmm, I'm not sure, it doesn't matter. Those are the type of answers you kind of want to steer into, okay, let's just relax, let's just be quiet. Sometimes last check's got to know to just like, Baby, my eyes are closed. I want to sleep. And clients may not really just tell you because they're like, okay, they're just trying to get to know me. But sometimes last checks or just service providers just do too much, too forceful. You got to know like when to just when to just stop, just just stop, just stop. Because it's just <laughs> sometimes people don't want to talk. Sometimes people are just not in the mood. They may have been in the mood while they was texting you, things like that, but they may have just got that one bad call in the parking lot that just threw their whole appointment off. You have to be in tune to feel that type of vibe from your client. So I will help you guys a little bit in how to, how to peak those vibes. There are some questions you can ask them, um, such as, do they have children? Where are they from? Where did they come from? Have they lived here all their life? with schools that they go to, basically getting to know somebody. 
And if you're just an introvert and you have no type of experience in getting to know anybody or you're not into it, um, such as myself, but I had to get into it because of business and I actually do like it now that I've gotten into it. Um, I actually do like my clients. I actually care about what they're doing. I'm like super into their life. Like we're, we're cool. So I feel like everybody should do that. If you're a service provider, you should want to talk and you should be a people's person. If not, go ahead and go digital because that's not what we're doing over here. Anyways, I would ask them questions of like, um, do they know many people around this area? Um, and sometimes I do, I won't say I lie, but I just create conversation like, I guess I lie. <laughs> sometimes I'll just be like, you know, I just moved over here. I may have just moved. I may have just been here for three years, but I can tell my new client who doesn't really know much and just found me off Google. I can tell them, I just, I just moved over here. I'm gonna get something to eat after this appointment. Do you recommend any places or what's your favorite places or what places should I not go to? You know, sometimes people like to gossip and like the drama. So you got to kind of figure out both, whether they gravitate more to talking about what they dislike or gravitate more to what they like. And that's kind of how you can figure out the client. You have to be like a people's reader. You have to be able to read people. Um, it's crazy, but it should be kind of easy. Once you're into doing lashes so much and working with women, you kind of know women. You know, I, I know women. I know, okay, this woman like to talk about drama. She likes to talk about what she don't like and the, the bad experiences all the time. And that's just, that's cool. That's just going to be our type of relationship at her appointments. And only, it's only one hour to me. It's not going to mess up my vibe. I'm going to clean the air and say my prayers and I'm going to go ahead and get that energy out. But at her point when she's paying me, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what little baby want to do and what Megan Thee Stallion just said on her interview. Even though I didn't watch it and I'm not into that stuff, I'm just going to be like, mm -hmm, and just keep on having her talk and just more ask her, well, how you feel about that? Like, what would you do? Things like that. You got to kind of, you know, you got to kind of role play. You got to kind of just, it kind of just, it's going to take a lot of practice because there are many different women some women will have their days where they're just depressed, don't want to talk about anything, and they just kind of need, just need a hug. Like, some women just need affection, physical touch. They don't want to hear you say, it's okay. They don't want to hear you say, okay, I understand, or do you want to, like, cancel? Like, some women just get offended super easily, so you just have to know women. Study up on women if you're going to be in a business with women. That's super important. You have to know how these women work. You have to know their triggers. You just have to know how to read women. It just got to, it has to combine, okay, for it to work. <laughs> there are other questions I would ask them. Um, you know, getting to know them, not asking them their favorite color, things like that. If you're into zodiacs, um, you can kind of ask about that. And if and they're, if they're into it, they will mingle. If they're not, they will shortcut answering. You have to learn how to move on to the next. Things I do to help myself remember about clients is I will go in my phone contacts. Um, of course, I will have their number, their name saved, and I will go down below, um, or I will show you guys right here. You can go down below in their contact name. You can kind of put the notes about them so that way if they tell you certain things about their children, certain things about their spouse, you know this at their first appointment to when they come back to their second appointment, you can ask them, you know, how that situation going on nowadays, now that it's been about two weeks, a week and a half, three weeks maybe. Um, you don't want to dwell on it because it has been that long. You know, we don't want to keep talking about the past. There's been a lot of other things that happened in three weeks, especially if that situation was triggering, triggering for them. And you don't want to bring that back up three weeks later. You know, you could just shortly, quickly bring it up into the new conversation three weeks. So for instance, if your client has, say she has a daughter who is going out of town um, for her first time out the country. And so at the appointment, that's all she was talking about. She was just, you know, she was just dwelling on this situation where her daughter is going out of the country for the first time, how she's nervous, how she's scared, how she thinks she's gonna change her mind. And at that time, you need to know how to reassure a client um, when she is 
jittery and antsy like that, um, you need to know how to reassure her and tell her, you know, I can, I can probably put myself in your place and could see how you feel that type of way because you know even though i don't have kids or if you do have kids i would feel that same type of way or if it wasn't my kid or if it was my sister or something like that i would kind of be antsy but i heard that a lot of people have good experiences and learn a lot and actually have a good time those are ways you can kind of put a good reassurance into someone and good energy into someone's thoughts by not even experiencing what went on or even know what could happen you could still reassure them just for that hour hour and a half two hours so that they make it through the appointment and so that you can get to your next client and that this person can feel like dang like i went home and she actually made me feel better i can talk to my daughter now and just be like you know you can go that way the daughter's not missing out on anything because you're a last check saying oh yeah that sounds scary i wouldn't let her do like don't make the energy worse what are you doing like there are some client there are some last checks out here or just service providers that just make the energy even worse like even if clients are going through a breakup they're really needing somebody to talk to if they're telling you something personal about their relationship you shouldn't just be like, oh, yeah, girl, leave him. And uh, I, I ain't doing that. That happened with me at one time. Like, don't make it all about you. Like, this is not about you. Your client is trying to talk to you. And you need to be able to be a friend. You need to be able to be a mother to her. Um, have some type of sisterhood. Something. You need to be more nurturing as a woman, basically, to another woman. Okay? Nobody wants to hear that they, they need to go ahead and dump it. They need to go ahead and leave, girl. Just leave, girl. That's that's not that's not the type of energy that's that's a negative energy that you don't want to feed into more so just be like you know you guys should talk or i don't know much about relationships things like that like you can share your experience of course but share more of your positive experience you know um hopefully you guys work out and i wish you the best and that's where you can kind of leave it at if you don't have anything nice to say so we kind of just got to be more nurturing and just care about these people. These people are here to promote us, market us, refer people to us, and they're going to be our number one supporters, whether you like it or not. Whether they're giving you discounted money, they're still your supporter because they still put that money in your pocket that you don't have. So you can have the ego or you can be grateful and really just appreciate what your clients are giving you because sometimes they teach you things about yourself that you may need at a certain time like i remember times i had my newborn and he was breastfeeding he was super clingy my husband was at work and she would just you know there was a time when she was down and i was there to uplift her even though it took so much out of me to do that because it kind of brought me down at the same time but at that time when she came back i was down and my kid was just everywhere like he was just only like six months he's crawling around crying just wanted me so bad just to be held um and at that time she was just like i'll hold him and then she she patted him to sleep and i was just like dang like i just love my clients like like i was just so like i was just i was like dang like it's, it just it just felt like family like it you know you don't really feel like asking your clients for help and things or you try to be as professional as you can so when she did that it just really took me back was like you know, I'm gonna give you a free set day. That that was that was big for me because it stressed me out so bad. I had so many clients back to back to back that if I didn't finish this client at a certain time because my kid had interfered with her time, then it was gonna push my whole day around. And you you guys know how that is. So your clients become your family and your friends at the end of the day. Even if you end up not liking them or you just think they're never gonna come back, they may come back three years later. I just had a client today that came that came back four years later four years when i was doing house calls i used to do her um a house call with her and um talk to her and everything and you know at that time i had a really good conversation and i was just kind of taken back that she never came back but today she did so you never know you know don't regret the energy the good energy that you put into these people because sometimes they need it and they actually do end up loving you and sticking to the same last check forever I know I'm not going to everybody.
and trying so many different people with tweezers on my eyes. I started doing my own lashes. But yeah, get to know your clients. If they're going through relationship problems, funeral, even if these things do trigger you, you know, at some times you can feel like, okay, it's a time for me to be open. But at the same time, remember that it's not all about you. And then always tell your client that she can contact you after the appointment. That way you can also get some triggers out and um, express yourself as well um, after appointment. But kind of keep it professional. And sometimes clients, you know, kind of feel the vibe. Like you have to be, you have to be diverse into different moods and different type of vibes. You have to be diverse, baby. So that's what keeps me winning as a client. And that's why people really love me because I can be super chill to where I kind of just have you on the same level as me. And then I can kind of be up there as well with your upbeat and your high vibrations. So that's why people keep coming to me. You have to know how to you know, play the role as and so. So if somebody's telling you, you just kind of just put more into it. And so how did you feel? And so what did you do? And so what would they do? Or what do you think they would say if you said that, you know? Or did you regret saying that? Would you have said anything else if you was in this different type of space? You know, I just kind of get really deep into my questions. So my clients just be so taken back by that. Um, and we have really deep conversations and they really feel like I care about them. And I also just study and I just, I, I do care about them. So I guess it's whatever I put out, they just give me back in return and they keep coming. So that's about all I can give you guys. Like I said, get to know them before the appointment, get to know deeper about their situations in life. And, um, you know, if they get their lashes done often, what happened to their last lash tech? Um, if this is their first time, what make them want to try it out? Um, things like that. Like you can, you can ask questions. There's a, there's so many different questions you can ask, especially when it comes to children and you have children, there's a lot for you guys to relate on. Um, again, don't try to dwell on things that are so negative in a conversation. Um, such as if someone had like a bad pregnancy experience and things like that, and you guys can relate on something like that. Um, try not to keep it so bad and kind of just tell them what you learned out of it and that it made you stronger and hopefully it did the same for her you know we kind of want to be uplifting still even if we're having depressing sad conversations be able to still be that nurturer and that um that stronger woman in the conversation so that your clients can always depend on you whether it's not even for a lash set it can potentially be therapy consult consulting so that's all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you guys learned a lot and I definitely will be having a part two because there are a lot of things I had to say and wanted to add more on to, but I didn't want to get into debt. Just keeping it really simple today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I love you guys. Peace.